Okay, so today we're going to be looking at uh, the pituitary. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at um, diseases uh, which cause um, oops, hypo pituitary. Okay, so overall, uh, there's about four diseases that uh, can cause um, hypo uh, One is going to be a um, non functioning adenoma. Okay, the other is going to be a, and then there is going to be a cranial pharyngeum, which is mostly found in kids. Um, now, just real quick, uh, a non functioning adenoma is going to be in contrast to a functioning adenoma, where a functioning adenoma would cause, obviously, hyperpituitarism. Um, now, the other one, so the cranial pharyngeoma, the other one's going to be uh, pituitary apoplexy, which is just basically a hemorrhage uh, in the pituitary, and that can be caused for uh, various reasons, as, was, as we'll. Uh, Discuss earlier, later, uh, in a little bit, and then we have um, the empty cella syndrome. Empty cella syndrome. So let's uh, just first uh, look real quickly at um, a non-functioning adenoma. So a non-functioning adenoma um, can be small, such as a microadenoma. Those are going to be generally less than 10 millimeters. Or it can be large, such as a macroadenoma. Those are known as macroadenomas, and they're generally greater than 10 millimeters. Now, uh, very famously, it's associated with a um, very common syndrome known as MEN, multiple endocrine neoplasia 1. Now, um, a great way to remember this is by using a um, diamond. So, um, if you use this diamond, obviously at the top we have what? The pituitary. Okay, on each side we have hyperparathyroidism, so increased PTH, and at the bottom you have the pancreas. Now, specifically in the pancreas, you either get an insulinoma or a gastrinoma, also known as uh, Zollinger Ellison. So these uh, three, pituitary, parathyroid, and pancreas, is going to be the MEN1 syndrome. And obviously this is going to be uh, hypo, so that's going to be a decreased pituitary. Now, um, the other one we're going to take a look at now is going to be a cranial pharyngioma. Now, um, as you know, the uh, anterior part of the pituitary uh, is comes from the Rathke's pouch. Uh, and um, when it comes to kids, uh, kids tend to have this sort of uh, disease, and so that's because um, the Rathke pouch remnants are the cancerous cells. Now, this is going to be generally located above uh, the uh, cella tersica. Okay. Now, this is going to be cystic in nature, so um, you can. So, therefore, it's going to be a possibility of giving getting hemorrhage and even calcifications. Okay. Um, the other thing is because if you take a look at the cranial pharyngioma, uh, here's a uh, MRI scan, and what you can notice um, is right here, this is the Rathke's pouch right here, it's growing into the brain. So this can destroy, obviously, the anterior, uh, the posterior um, pituitary, and also the anterior. So that's gonna. So when, when it destroys the uh, posterior, not only can it lead to all the problems of hyperpituitarism, but it can lead to diabetes insipidus. Also, of course, it can impinge on the uh, optic chiasm. So it can also cause bilater bilateral hemianopsia. And basically, bilateral hemianopsia is when um, you cannot see uh, the outside field of vision. So um, you cannot. So on the uh, on your right eye, you can't see on the right side. On the left eye, you can't see on the left side. And that's going to be bilateral hemianopsia. That's just basically due to the impingement at the um, optic chiasm. Now, pituitary ap uh, apoplexy. Um, this is due to any type of hemorrhage or infarct, 
into the pituitary. Now, there's many. Uh, there, there could be a variety of different causes for this. Uh, one of them being uh, trauma, trauma to the head, such as in a car accident. Um, Sheehan syndrome. This is when a uh, lady is pregnant and um, the pituitary doubles in size, and obviously the, the vessels don't accommodate that. And as soon as she becomes pregnant, uh, she gets infarct in her pituitary, and this is the first sign of this is she's not able to breastfeed. Um, again, you can get an adenoma, uh, which leads to an infarction. Sickle cell can lead to um, an infarction as well because of uh, sickling in the uh, pituitary area causes a blockage in the uh, blood vessels. And also bromocryptine, which is a dopamine uh, antagonist, can also do that. Um, the other one is going to be the empty cell syndrome. Uh, empty cell syndrome is basically when there is no um, pituitary in the cella. And so um, what happens is uh, CSF from the subarachnoid space uh, begins to go into the uh, cella tercica and it, it's going to flatten the pituitary. And I have an um, image of this. So what you see is um, this area here is actually the sphenoid sinus and so what happened is um, due to some type of anatomical defect uh, from the subarachnoid space you got actually fluid coming into here um, and what this does is this pushes the uh, pituitary up and over into this area and it flattens it out like you can see there so flattened pituitary is going to be a cell, uh, empty cell syndrome now, um, there could be two types of causes. Um, with, with the primary cause, is usually due to some anatomical defect. And this is going to happen with obese women, uh, female, uh, and also it's going to be with uh, hypertension. Um, with, in secondary causes, this can be due to surgery. Uh, it can also be due to trauma and radiation. So now that we've talked about a lot of the different types of cause of hypopituitarism, um, now we can look at the clinical uh, now the clinical uh, manifestations that are associated with it. Now it doesn't matter which uh, which cause it is, um, you're going to have at the minimum these symptoms, um, and this is going to be related to the hormones. So uh, there's going to be symptoms related to a decrease in FSH and LH. There's going to be um, symptoms related to a decrease in growth hormone. And there's going to be symptoms related to a decrease in ACTH. And there's going to be a symptoms uh, due to decrease TSH. Okay, so if we uh, focus on the um, FSH and LH first, uh, if you have a child, um, they're going to just have delayed puberty. So this probably won't show up until a little bit later. In a female, um, they will come with secondary amenorrhea, um, osteoporosis. Actually, it'll be kind of like they're on menopause. And um, they're going to have hot flashes and decreased libido. When it comes to men, um, they're primarily going to be with impotence and decreased libido. And it makes sense. Uh, depending on your gender and your age, you're going to have different uh, reactions. Now, there is a test for this. Uh, there is a specific test uh, that we use to determine um, whether the, the FSH function is okay or not. And this is basically uh, giving the patient uh, GnRH. This is a hormone that comes down from the hypothalamus and it activates uh, FSH and LH. And so, if it's so in a normal patient, you should uh, notice a subsequent increase in FSH and LH. However, if they're abnormal, uh, there will be no change in FSH and LH. And so, then you know this will diagnose that uh, there is some type of hypopituitarism, at least with regards to the uh, gonadal tumors. Now, the other one is going to be growth hormone. So with uh, growth hormone, um, this is going to be distinguished based on age. So if you're a child, um, you're going to present with pituitary dwarfism. 
Okay, and this is due to the decreased fusion of the uh, epiphysis. And um, one way you can tell is the growth plates uh, will be less than the actual uh, age of the patient. Um, and that's, that's one way you can tell. Now, in an adult, uh, if you get a decrease in growth hormone, obviously they're not going to get smaller. But what you do notice is um, you get decreased glucose. And because growth hormone is responsible for maintaining the level of glucose, also it's uh, responsible for muscle mass. So if, if you don't have it, you're going to decrease in muscle mass. And it also helps in breakdown of fat. So if you don't have it, obviously you're going to get an increase in the depots, especially around the waist. Um, now the way they test for this is uh, it turns out that arginine uh, and obviously growth hormone releasing hormone uh, will stimulate it. And so what you do is you, uh, you monitor the IGF-1 levels at 5 a.m. while they're sleeping. And this will help determine uh, whether they have it or not. Now in ACTH, obviously the first thing that you're going to notice is going to be there's going to be a decrease in cortisol. Uh, and this, of course, leads to a decrease in glucose because this is also responsible for maintaining your blood glucose level. And uh, you do get mild SIADH, and so that's going to lead to hyponatremia. Now, the test for this is to give the patient ACTH, and um, if you have, and so if you get an increase in cortisol then that means the problem is not enough ACTH. If you don't get an increase in cortisol, it means it's something else. Now, um, there is another uh, test for this. It's called the uh, metiropone test. Now, metiropone um, blocks, inhibits 11-hydroxylase. Uh, now, 11-hydroxylase, um, where is it used? Well, first, if we look at, you have ACTH. ACTH is going to be uh, it's going to activate the 11-deoxycortisol. Uh, this is going to in turn activate 11-hydroxylase, which will in turn activate cortisol. And cortisol is going to inhibit ACTH. Now, what um, materapone does is it cancels 11 hydroxylase. So what this is going to do is going to lead to a decrease in cortisol, and so what you would expect is an increase in ACTH. So in other words, metiropone is only going to decrease cortisol, so you have that, so you stop that negative uh, feedback on the ACTH. So what you would expect is to have an increase in ACTH. However, if you have pituitary hyperfunction, even though you have decreased cortisol, there is no subsequent increase in ACTH. Um, finally, with regards to um, thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, you're going to get a de you're going to notice a decrease in that. And so what that's going to lead to do is you're going to have decreased thyroxine. And so they're going to have, obviously, they're going to have hypothyroidism. And um, you're going to get all the common symptoms associated with that, which is going to be uh, coldness, uh, weight gain, uh, depression, uh, and all those.